Good morning, dear saints, church of the living God, pillar and ground of the truth. Of course, get your authorized version of the scriptures, and please read along with me in the scriptures that you and I will be considering today. Please read along with me. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration, word of God, the authorized version. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. That's a lowercase w. Remember, capital case W appears seven times in the authorized version of the scriptures. Unless it's like at the beginning of a verse or something. But the seven time appearances of capital W word are always in reference to Jesus Christ who is God our Father. Okay? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Read along with me. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily. Whether these things be so. And read along with me because, like I said, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I make mistakes. I'm very fallible. This, this is perfect. This is perfect. So read along with me. Okay? Big part. Big part. Mm. I'm not like you, brother. I, I cold coffee and me, they, they don't mix. Anyway, before we get into scripture, um, I was asked a beautiful question by a, a dear sweetheart of a brother, uh, a dear brother of ours, who, um, who recently has been putting up these, um, on his channel, um, these, um, pictures with scripture verses in them um check check the community section here on the channel i put a couple of them up there myself uh he, he did one that had a little putty titty cat sleeping and he put uh uh love not sleep or something like that it was beautiful and when i saw those that he started doing that it's like oh i got really excited because are those baby steps to maybe Maybe eventually seeing that pretty face, huh, you know? So I, I got really excited when uh, I, start, I saw that our brother started to do that. It's like, oh, good. Maybe this is a prelude to something, you know? But anyway, uh, and this dear brother of ours is renowned, at least unto me, for asking really, really, really good questions. And I am one that uh, adheres to um, uh, the question that isn't asked is the worst one of all. But then again, you got to remember, there's a lot of people ask all kinds of questions. But there are people who will ask questions who don't want to hear the answers, who don't want truth, but ask questions just to be disputatious. The scriptures talk about foolish questions. Okay, foolish, behaving as if they say in their heart there is no God. You know, asking a question whose answer you already got your mind set up on, and you're not going to believe anything that even if they give you truth. You got to watch out for that. And longevity in your walk with the Lord will help you help you with that. But anyway, here's the question. And of course, brother, I didn't ask you because um, I I don't I I mean I don't know you as well as I'd like. Um, and that's my bad, um, you know, but if ever I could have had a son, but I, I don't think you're, you would mind, dear brother, uh, about sharing this. Here's the question. What would we do, quote, what would we do if we were in Adam's place? Would we eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? And I, I, yeah, I do love chili peppers, brother. Oh, oh, uh, set, a, set a little fire on me, yeah. Oh, yeah, I like chili peppers, by the way. 
you, people, you guys don't even know that. That's an inside thing. But what would we do if we were in Adam's place? What would we do? And right away that made me think about, you know, you know how like some of these sleazy believers like to hide under the umbrella of, well, we're all sinners. What would we do? Peter, you know, when he came to John, it's like, uh, and Lord, what's this guy going to do? You know, and that's in John chapter 21, I believe that is. Well, he's like, hey, Lord, what, what's he going to do? And the Lord's like, if I will, he stay to uh, tarry till I come. What is that to thee? Follow thou me. Hmm. What would we do? What would I do? What would I do? What would you do? What would I do? Beautiful question. Beautiful question. I, I expect no less from you, dear brother. I, I expect no less from you. Thank you. What is, of course, what is he talking about? We, we all know it. Let's go there. Genesis 3. One of the most important um, chapters in all of Scripture. In all of Scripture. Genesis means beginning. Genesis 3, 6 on to 19. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, visual stimuli, and that it was pleasant to the eyes right there, and a tree desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Now, stop right there. There are those out there who preach and teach that Adam willfully went along with this out of charity, self-sacrifice for his wife, because the two are one flesh, okay? Um, there are a lot that teach that and preach that, that, well, Adam, you know, he, you know, charity, which is self-sacrifice there, okay? Uh, he willingly is like, oh, well, my, my wife screwed up, uh, I might as well go along with her. I don't agree with that. And I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to argue with you about that or whatever, but I, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. First of all, in verse 6, there is no evidence in verse 6 at all to even suggest that that was what Adam was thinking. <laughs> and of course, after the fact, you know, the, which we're going to look at, um, clearly is like, you know, it's like, ah, you know, well, yeah, you know, I had to because you did. But I don't agree with that. Um, well, Adam willfully, out of charity, self-sacrifice, gave, uh, you know, eight of that. I don't agree with that. Here's where people will go to, uh, to kind to say that that's what Adam did. I don't agree. I don't agree. First Timothy 2. Verses 9 on to verse 14. Hey, hey, you women out there who've got a problem, like stupid Ed Christy Burke and the uh, Lord had that thing done on uh, uh, Kamala this week. Um, you know, and uh, <laughs> there are even sisters, saved, saints, sisters, who, I've seen it, who have um, issue, who get kind of uppity with this in a way. Um, and, I, and I pray for you sisters out there who still have that reservation over this. But anyway, they come to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 9 on to verse 14. In like manner also, that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array. And then you can, or you can go to what Peter says, that, you know, let it be the adornment of um, a meek and quiet spirit, not with broidered hair and stuff like that. You know, uh, a woman who feareth the Lord, she shall be praised, okay? Um, there are a few saints, sisters that I am aware of. Um, you know, I, and of course, without mention, you know, my wife, but um, there's, a, there's another uh, specifically... Well, there's two. There's one in England and there's one here in America. Uh, but um, Or whatever it is. 
uh, that are actually saints that fear the Lord. You know, and, and be praised, okay? But it's not the outer adornment which means anything. It's the hidden man of the heart. Okay? Verse 10. But which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. But I, what does that mean? Well, a woman's got to sit there, can't speak at all. Can't speak at all. At all. Can't say, well, oh, hi. Shh. No, no, no. What is this more pointing to? Verse 12. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Ah, I suffer not a woman to teach. And this right there, like little stupid head Christy Burke in the videos rebuking that idiot, will be in the description box, um, along with the one of this week about Camelot. Okay, but right there. And people will point to that. Well, Paul was a, what's the word? Oh, what's the word? Misogynist or something, which I've been accused of. <laughs> yeah. Um, they say, that, you know, well, he's a misogynist. He hated women. No, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. Women were created for a specific, glorious, beautiful purpose. And if you have a problem with that, your problem isn't with anything I say. It's with the Father. Okay? For Adam was first formed, then Eve. Woman of man. That's what that means. Okay? And if, if you as a woman find shame in that, then you are showing contempt for you. Think about that. It's like these transgender idiots, and I'm being kind, okay, who, uh, you know, it's like, well, I'm in a man's body, but I'm actually a woman, and then you go through these horrific things to try to do that, change these things. You're actually showing contempt for what God made when you try to blur what you think your gender ought to be. Same with a woman. Same with a man, Okay. When a man, you know, sodomite wants to act like a woman, he's showing contempt for what God made. A woman wanting to take on all the stuff of a man, you're showing contempt for what God made. Leave what God made alone. Okay? Leave it alone. Just go with it. Okay? But, for Adam was first formed, then Eve. And here's where they go. For Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. This simply means, and, I, and I've, I've had um, correspondence with brethren where we actually had some, some back and forth about this. And they say, well, see, that shows Adam wasn't deceived. What does this mean? First of all, who did Satan go to in Genesis chapter 3? Who did he go to? Did he go to Adam? No, he didn't. Who did he go to? Genesis 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now we learn in Scripture that the woman is the weaker vessel. Okay? Even though there are women out there who could actually physically beat me up. And, uh, you know, anyone could learn how to do a rear naked choke. Okay? Uh, you know, to do it well, okay, you're right. But anyone can learn how to choke someone. Okay, okay. Ain't that right, bloke? Okay. Uh, but anyway, um, women were made to be of a meek and quiet spirit, to be a help meet. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. That is God's purpose for the woman. Okay, but see, it shows you something. Satan went for Eve. Why not Adam? And, of course, one of the uh, things that is very interesting to muse upon is, um, where was Adam? Why wasn't Adam there? Why wasn't Eve by Adam? Hmm? Bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh? 
Okay? That we could, we could muse upon for quite a while. The point is, Satan went after the woman. So when you go to second, uh, 1 Timothy 2, verse 14, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. The woman, the weaker vessel. Okay? Satan went for the weaker vessel. So what this means simply is, Satan didn't go to Adam. He went to Eve. Eve was deceived. That's what that means. Okay, that's what that that's what verse uh, fourteen there means. There, saints. Okay, Satan went to Eve, then Eve went to her husband. Now we can uh, we can muse about whether or not if he would have went to Adam, what would Adam have done? What would have Adam have done if Satan went to him? What would he have done? We don't know because that's not what happened. It's an interesting thought. It's an interesting topic to muse upon. Yes, it is. Beautiful. But that's not what happened. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. We can, we, like I said, you can, and fruit can come from those kinds of things. Yes, but the fact is, and Adam was not deceived. Satan didn't go to Adam. But the woman being deceived, Satan went to the woman. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Yea, hath God said. What would have Adam have done? What would we have done? Hmm? What would we have done? Now, and also too, I, I can, I, I can, I can feel some of you, uh, you know, <laughs> who get a little uppity when we talk about this thing about. Uh, how what God meant for you, woman. First Corinthians eight, verses eight on twelve. Am I, uh, excuse me. First Corinthians eleven, verses eight on to twelve. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Right, that, right there. What does it mean to be a woman? Look that up online sometime and see all the philosophy and vain deceit that comes about it. You know, there are some women out there who preach, well, we're more godlike than men because we can create. <laughs> A little bit of pride going there. I'm one. Yeah. Anyway, for the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. That's what woman means, of man. Okay? Neither was the man created for the woman, and, and I have seen, when quoting this verse, with a Christian women, you know, with the low cut and dressed like a whore, and you, know, you yeah, you Christian. I, I have seen the flip of the switch. Oh, I've seen it. And you know what? For some of you, my enemies, I wouldn't even be in a jerk about it. I'll give you that. I'll give you some of that. Sometimes when I'm out there and I run into things, I, I will. Mm, I, I will get a little uppity sometimes. I will. Okay, I know that's bad. I know, I know. But there, there are sometimes or special situations. It's like it, 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 I don't got time for you. Okay, you, you want to be disputed? Okay, <laughs> all right. I could throw it right back at you. But anyway, I wasn't even you know wasn't even being a jerk. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Help meet, and I have seen. Women, crazy women, who, um, when they hear that, that sets them off. That, that's a problem. Anyway, this caused off the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Ne nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, meaning women bear children. Okay? Neither the woman without the man in the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, so even so is man also by the woman. Giving birth. But all things of God. Hmm. 
That's why Satan went to the woman. That's why Satan went to the woman. Now go back to Genesis 3. Verse 7. Day 8 of the tree. Again, verse 6, and we just looked at where people will go to say, well, Adam sacrificed himself, charity. I disagree. I disagree. Was there deception involved? Willful deception? I don't think so. I don't think Eve was like, I'm going to show you. I don't think she did anything like that. I really don't. And you can't support that idea with the text. It just simply says, She took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Okay? In the text, and we already explained 1 Timothy 2, verse 14. Okay? In the text, you, 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 you don't really have that much evidence to support that Adam knowingly, willfully shewed charity to die with his wife. That is the, you know, bone of, our, uh, bone of my bone, flesh of our flesh. That's what we as husbands ought to do. Not blame them for our problems, pal. Let me start it on that. Anyway, anyway, there's no evidence really, really to suggest that. That's why I disagree with it. I'm not, not, I'm not saying that's maybe not what could have happened. I just disagree with you. If you say, well, he, he did it out of charity. I disagree. What was Eve being mean, evil, deceptive? She didn't, they didn't know better, dude. Uh, ooh, that's a good one. Did they know of dying? <laughs> did they, that, 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 did they know, uh, beg your pardon, of dying? Did they know of dying? No. They, you know, she was deceived. It's like, oh, make me wise. God knows the day you eat thereof, you can be your own God. She said, oh, oh. And we have nothing in the text that suggests that Eve said anything. It's like, hey, this is, did Adam recognize it? We really don't have evidence that he did. See, these are things that we can muse upon. Okay? But evidence, evidence for these things that we can muse upon aren't really prevalent. Just saying. Let's continue. So they both ate of the tree. The eyes of them both were open, and they knew they that they were naked. Sin came in. See, they were given a work to do not to do something. They saw God and they did it that they went contrary to the work that God told them not to do. Okay? You you easy believers just need to shut up. Okay, let's continue. All right. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden of the cool of the day. Come here, come here. How does a voice walk without a body? Huh? The Spirit of God went across the waters in the, uh, Genesis chapter 1. Huh? How does a voice walk? Sound travels. How does a voice walk unless it has a body? Faith wasn't necessary when they could see God, you free grace idiot. Of course I got to take a shot at them. Okay, let's continue. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Now, God knows everything. God, you know, here, here's, our, here's time that you and I are constrained by. God is outside of time. He can see the beginning from the end. He knows everything. He knows everything. Well, what do you say about this? He was looking for a confession. God knew what happened. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. 
but he was giving Adam a chance to fess up, to be a man. And now sin was entered into them. Yes, they didn't. But heretofore, they had no knowledge of sin, only that God said, see that? Don't eat. Don't eat that. If you do, hmm. he didn't say you shall surely die. But he's like, don't eat that. Don't eat that. That's all he said. He didn't say, uh, if you do, you shall surely die. He did not say that. He said, don't eat that. That's a work. Okay? They didn't know about sin. They didn't know about sin. Okay? He didn't say in Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, But of the tree of the knowledge of, the, of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. He didn't say anything about touching it. Which Eve says, you know, in verse 3, in Genesis 3, But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. He never said that. Don't eat it. That's work, genius. Okay? But he never said don't touch it. Excuse me for kind of bumbling over my tongue. Okay? It's clear work. God was looking for a confession. He knew what had happened. But he was looking for giving Adam the chance to fess up to be the man and to take his licking. But what did he do? And the man said, oh wait, and he said, uh, verse 11, and he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. Now, sin was in the world now. Their eyes were open. Heretofore, they, they, they didn't know anything about it. Okay? And remember, this will be in the description box. Who was the first one to bring up dying? Death. Who was the first one? We already saw the verse. There's a clue for you. We have the, uh, the video for that will be in the description box. Okay? Now, does this mean that Adam willfully subjected himself to that? See, one would say, well, I think so. Ah, uh, I disagree. I disagree. If a, okay, a matter of pride, because hey, hey, look at, look at that response. You, woman, me. Or how you, woman, you, me. Passing the buck as it is. Why? Pride. You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. What would be if he did that actually out of charity? It's like, yeah, you know, I had to because she made this mistake, so of course I'm going to die for her. Wouldn't that be a little bit more in line with someone who had their eyes open? You know what I'm saying? That's why I disagree with the assumption that Adam, willfully out of charity, did what he did for his wife. I, 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 I don't agree with that. I, I don't agree with that. I think there was a level of deception there. Intentional? No. But I do believe there was a level of deception there. I do. I do. And Eve just handing it willy-nilly. I don't think she did it out of uh, meanness or anything like that. There's no evidence in that in the text. But I do believe, you know, hey, yeah, have God said, there's deception. I do believe there was a level of deception there, as we already saw in uh, 1 Timothy 2, because Satan went to the weaker link. Okay? Again, I do not agree that Adam acted in charity. Because if he did, like I said there, dude, why does he do woman... You, me, eyes are open. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Hey, look how good I was. Okay, yeah, my wife messed up. Yeah, but look, hey, I, I had to, Lord. I had to die for her because of what she did. Look at me, see, the reverse, but yet uplifting self still. I said, I don't agree. I don't agree with that. I don't agree that he did that willfully. But anyway, let's continue. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. 
the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly thou shalt go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between, thy, between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. The very first prophecy of Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? On the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Things changed, okay? And on the Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Look at that. Hearken. Listen to. Listen to. If Adam did what he did out of pure charity for his wife, why isn't that reflected in the text at all? Because I don't think he did that out of charity. That's just my opinion. Okay, let's continue. And, and, he, and unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall I bring forth to thee. And thou shalt eat of the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Mm. And interesting, the serpent which at one time had legs, but was cursed, that's, you know, in the rear end of a snake, there's this little thing that there's little two holes as if they had legs. Um, that's not evolution, that's the curse. The serpent was cursed, meaning I believe that the serpent there uh, at one time did have legs, but God cursed him to crawl on his belly. There goes the legs. Okay, not evolution. All right? So, so, the question stands. What would we do? What would you do? What would I do if in Adam's stead? Also, the same thing could be mused upon, mused upon when you consider Job. When you consider Job. Job, chapter 1. Job, chapter 1. Beginning at verse 13. Satan came before the Lord. The Lord's like, hast thou considered my servant Job? Okay. <laughs> uh, where is, uh, verse 8. And the Lord said unto Satan, hast thou considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and sheweth evil. And then the accuser of the brethren, Satan. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, doth Job fear God for naught? And then Satan goes on to say, take away everything. And he'll curse you for take away all his stuff. Take away his children. Take away his livelihood. Take away everything. Except his wife. Who also, one flesh, also uh, shared in the devastation of her husband. Okay? And believe me, that wasn't out of charity, I think. <laughs> okay? Anyway, verse 13. And there was a day, and say, and God said, "Go ahead, take away everything from him." But what does He say? Only upon Himself, verse twelve. Only upon Himself, put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. God was like, "Go ahead, but don't touch him." And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. There came a messenger on Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. 
and I only am escaped to, alone to tell thee one. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven, and hath burned up the sheep and the servants, and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee two in succession. When it rains, it pours. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, The fire of God hath fallen from heaven. And you can link this on to Revelation, how the, uh, the false prophet calls down fire in front of people uh, to mock Elijah, to make it appear like Elijah as well. Okay? And hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Three. One, two, three. You talk about getting the rug pulled out from under you. You talk about being smacked upside your mouth. While he was yet speaking, there came also another four. One after another. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and, high, and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While there, um, excuse me, got a little ahead of myself. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. Behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. So we see, verse 15, 1, verse 16, 2, verse 17, 3, verse 18, 4. One, two, three, four, in succession. He lost his substance, his livelihood, his children. Biff, bam, boom. What does Job do? Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return hither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Across the page in Job 2, Satan goes to the Lord, and the Lord recites to him, like, Hast thou considered my servant Job? Hmm. Verse 3 and 2, The Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and sheweth evil? Still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. And what does Satan say? Yeah. Yeah, skin for skin, yea. All that a man hath will he give for his life. What does Satan do, the accuser of the brethren? Such just bone in his flesh. They'll curse you to your face. God's like, go ahead, but don't kill him. Then Satan's like, all right. Then goes out and sm smites Job with boils from the head of his from his head to the foot. And a boil is a very painful big pimple, more or less. Okay? <clears throat> verse 7, uh, verse 9 on verse 10, which we covered on Wednesday's video, I believe. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. God remember about Job's wife. She won flesh. Those were her, her children too. Came out from betwixt her feet. That was her livelihood. Her substance as well. Okay? But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. What would you do? What would I do in a situation like that? 
What would we do? What would you do? What would I do? If we were in Adam's stead. Ah, and you know, before you start, you know, patting yourself on the back there, your holiness, huh? Before you start thinking all highly of yourself, huh? Well, of course I wouldn't. You know, of course, it's like Adam should have done. It's like, put some smack. What are you doing? What are you doing? That's what he should have done. Why didn't he do that? We've already kind of talked about that. The question is, what would I have done? What would you have done? Now, see, we have an advantage that Adam and even Job didn't. We have the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God. We have the completed canon of Scripture. Okay? We do. We, you know, all things that were written for time were written for our learning. Uh, Adam had a personal, intimate relationship with the Lord God, our Father, in likes that we as saints will have eventually. We, the Lord lives within us. Yes. But see, sin is here in the sin suit. And before they went contrary to the work that the Lord assigned them to not do, okay, um, there was a pristineness that isn't even there for us today, even though the Father dwells within us. Okay, Why is that? Because of this, the sin suit. Okay? But see, we, we have all things that were written for time, were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. And while, you know, while you're sitting there, you're thinking, you know, oh, happy and proud of yourself, right? Huh? You think, you think you're something special, your holiness, right? You got your head in the clouds on your big high horse, huh? You know, before you start thinking, well, of course I wouldn't have. I would have been. Yeah. Of course I would have been like, really? You know, in Wednesday's video, we, uh, we talked about the thing of the heart. It's an issue of the heart. We talked about that. And the heart is, is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked in Genesis chapter 6. You know, the imagination of man's heart is evil continually, okay? And we like to puff ourselves up, thinking, well, if I were, I were in that position. Really? Really? Of course, it's conjecture. But see, as I told the dear brother yesterday, there's a problem, though. Matthew 23 Matthew 23, which is describing the spiritual climate before the, uh, the time of Jacob's trouble. And Matthew 24 has nothing to do doctrinally for us today. It's talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Matthew 23 is describing the spiritual climate before the time of Jacob's trouble. Matthew 24, time of Jacob's trouble. Matthew 25, after the time of Jacob's trouble. It fit perfectly. But Matthew 23, verse 23 on to 33. Okay. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. Judgment. Funny it starts with that. Mercy and faith. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Ye blind guides, which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Perfect example. These easy believers, i got to pick on them most I can. Uh, these easy believers, when it comes to Romans chapter 10, they, they come to verse 14 in Romans chapter 10. It's like, they never talk about verse 14. And they focus in on belief. When verses 14 on to verse 17 are talking about those of us who are sent out to preach and to teach the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. They focus in on the word belief and ignore the context of it. Okay? Anyway, let's continue. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye may clean the outside of the cup and the platter, 
but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, clean first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? Got to remember that. Because who cleans our insides? Not us. Not today. Not in this dispensation. Okay? But it comes from within. Okay? Verse 27. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, not sepulchres, <laughs> which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Like so many of these Christians, they look good on the outside, but on the inside. Oh, our brother um, uh, did a really good uh, what's on the inside? Inside, yes. Our brother was given a gem about that, which will be in the description box as well. I wrote it down too, brother, so I won't forget. Anyway. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, right here, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! Because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the prophets and say, look at this, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. And these are the same ones who go on to turn over the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, onto the Roman government to be crucified. <laughs> well, if we were in their days, we wouldn't have done... I, 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 me, me, me. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. I love this response. Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves, that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, because look what they're doing! You look in John chapter 8, I think it is, where many believed on him, and he's like, whoa, 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 spunky britches. Okay, if ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. And then they go from justifying, justifying, justifying themselves. And then the Lord shoots them down at every, at every shot. And then they turn around and it's like, are, do we not say well that thou art a Samaritan and thou hast a devil? So justification of self, justification of self, justification of self. That don't fly with the Lord. He puts his finger on that one thing you lack. And then they turn and they say, you have a devil. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. Ye serpents. Ye generation of vipers. How can ye escape the damnation of hell? These were the same ones that willfully handed over the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, unto the Roman government to be crucified. Thinking all highly of yourself. Huh? You can pat yourself on the back, huh? your holiness. Yeah. I think a guy like you would probably, of course I would, you really think so, don't you? Point is, would we? See, we have the complete canon of Scripture. We know what we ought to do, but see, here's the thing again. God doesn't force you to do what's right. Neither does Satan. I should have gotten a gun out there and really tick off that heretic. 
And neither does Satan hold a gun to your head to force you to do wrong. You have to make the right choices based off of a perfect standard. And see, when you are your own standard, you don't even know your own heart. That's when you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And this 1 Corinthians chapter 4, these wicked devils w wanting to justify themselves, and these Christians, well, you can't judge me. Only God can judge me. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! Shut up! You can't judge me. Only God that. Shut up, dude. Just shut up. Okay, have you read 1 Corinthians 6? Huh? Huh? Hey, don't judge me. Uh, judge not. Shut up. Shut up. Okay, we are supposed to judge. Okay, we have a perfect standard that we judge ourselves first. And guess what? Because I judge me. The Lord judges me through his perfect standard. I judge you by the same perfect standard that I am judged by. When someone, people listen to me, listen to me. When someone says, don't judge me, or only God can judge me. Okay? Similar to what we talked about on Wednesday. And someone says that they're justifying themselves and trying to justify something. It's it's like well, God knows my heart. They they're like peas and carrots. Okay, they go hand in hand. When well, don't judge me, you can't judge me. Only God can judge me. Uh, you're right about that. And this is how God judges you. I ju I am judged of these very same scriptures. Therefore, I'm you bet your bottom dollar. I'm going to be judging you by the same standard I judge myself. And I'm judged of. Okay? When someone tells you, don't judge me. That's when you ought to do the contrary and judge them according to a perfect standard. 1 Corinthians 4. Let a man so account of us as the minister, uh, as of the ministers of Christ, and, in, and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful unto God. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. That is because man's judgment in and of itself is flawed. We don't even know our own hearts. We are under the curse. Okay, mankind. Okay, the Lord, when we go the way of the cross, He redeems us from that. Okay, yes, He does. But mankind in general, uh, you can't judge rightly. You can't. See, you need a perfect standard to judge yourself by and others. And man, apart from God, his judgment is flawed. Okay? So when Paul says, it's a small, uh, but with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or of man's, or of man's judgment. Because man's judgment by itself is flawed. Yea, I judge not mine own self. Because Paul knew and he, he saved man. Father was in him. But see, his own judgment apart from God was flawed. For I know nothing by myself. He just said what I said. Okay? Yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. Yes, that's true. How does God judge you? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. Why do you think these Jesuit trained cemeterians and their yea hath God said, okay, uh, uh, the one Christian building guy over there will be in the description box for you, okay? Uh, why do you think Satan has gone so hardcore 
trying to counterfeit and give you a replacement, an anti to be against and replace a Bible, not the scriptures. Okay? So, but he that judgeth me is the Lord. Again, Paul is reiterating man's judgment. Look at that! For I know nothing by myself. Yet am I not hereby, yet am I not hereby justified. Because the Father, Christ in you, the hope of glory, by grace through our faith. Okay? Okay, in this dispensation. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. And every one of us shall give an account of himself to the Lord. What is the standard for judgment? The authorized version. People, this is this is not simple. This is simple. Verse 5. Therefore, judge nothing before the time. Judge nothing. So you can't judge it. Oh, that, 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 that's monkey bridges. Until the Lord come. Second coming. No, then we'd be in big trouble. Then, according to these Christians, then nothing can be judged until the second coming. Woo! -hoo! No. Until the Lord come, who will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsels of the heart. And then shall every man have praise of God. This simply means you can't judge rightly until the Lord saves you. And he is within you, and he guides you onto the perfect standard where you judge yourself and others. That's what that simply means. Okay? So, that's what Romans 2 is about. Two lost people judging themselves by their standard, their own standard, and not the perfect standard which our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, gives us His Word. Okay? That's what that means. So, judge nothing, therefore judge nothing before the time. You're lost. Your judgment is flawed. Man's judgment is flawed, period. And our spirit and soul are housed in this sagging sin suit. Okay? So, to judge according to this is flawed. And that's what lost people do. Okay? Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, until the Lord saves you and seals you, who will bring, who will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and make manifest the counsels of the heart. And then shall, have, and then shall every man have praise of God. Once the Lord saves you and seals you with himself, he will guide you into all truth and he will eventually guide you to the scriptures. Um, yeah. That's what that means. See, you have the Father that dwells within you. But see, he doesn't put a gun to your head nor to Satan to make you, force you to make the right decision. But see, he guides you onto his word, the authorized version, so you can make those right decisions. Okay? Why well, watch out for these idiots. These idiots who say, don't judge me. That's when you specifically should judge them. Not by yourself, because your, your own judgment outside of God is flawed. You need the scriptures. Uh, you need the Lord. Look at verse 18 and 19. Now some are puffed up as though I would not come to you. But I will, but I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will. And will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. What's the power that the saint has? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Okay? Jesus Christ is our power. He is our hope. He is our everything. Unless you save yourself by your own belief, what's your power? Yourself, the easy believers. Unless, you know, you had a good confession, good contrition, you had the cookie and you drank the wine. Again, I, 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 me, me, me. Okay? And we can go down the line on that. Hmm? Oh, brethren, how many of these Christians speak? Oh, such a I've run, I've encountered many of them. Oh, they sound so good. They speak so softly. But then you scratch them and they have the power. They profess that they know God. But they, in works, they deny him. And what is that? 
Uh, in First uh, Timothy chapter six. <laughs> um, where is that? Denying the power thereof, uh, but from such turn away. Oh, uh, one second, I gotta find that. Second Timothy three five. Excuse me, there. Uh, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. That was the verse I was thinking of. Our power is the Lord Jesus Christ that dwells in the saved, sealed saint. Jesus Christ is our power, not ourselves. Free grace, they are their own power, they are their own God. Catholic, they are their own power, they are their own God. Okay, Calvinists, they are their own power, they are their own God. Okay, Pentecostals, same thing. Okay, they are of their father, the devil. All right? All right? Now, now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Verses 1 on verse 3. Now, as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. We all have knowledge. Yes, we do. We all know something. Okay? Unless you're a free gracer. <laughs> I'm not sorry. I, I had to. Okay. Uh, I have no respect for free grace. Because free grace that those guys offer is not the grace of God. They offer you freedom uh, from sin, meaning free, free from God. Okay? Free from God and a license to sin. Okay? That's the freedom that they offer you. Okay? Freedom from sin, meaning, hey, you can sin without any problem. That's what that means. Okay? Anyway. Now, as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity, self-sacrifice, edifieth. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. Love God. Oh, so many claim to love God, but it works they deny him. I'm better than so-and-so. I'm going to do it because we've always done it like this and all things are lawful for me. And remember, when it comes to idols and idolatry, yes, Paul is clearly talking about a statue. But remember, dear friend, an idol is always the extension of the true idol. He shall be his God. Knowing good and evil. That's why some people get so wrapped up and willing to cause such division over the December 25th heresy. Okay? Alright? Why? Because they are their own idols. All things are lawful for me. The physical idol is always the extension of the true idol. And what is the true idol there? It's a reflection. Okay, your little satanic pagan, I'm not even going to go there, but your little idol, your little statue, your little tree, okay, whatever it is, your other person that you idolize, that you put up on a high horse, huh, you ite. What is the, see, the idol is always an extension of what? Isaiah 14, 13 on 14. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. You don't know your own heart. Colossians 2. Colossians 2. Colossians 2. Verses 18 on to verse 23. The close. What happens? See, the actual physical idol, like I said, is always the extension of the true idol. 
He shall be as gods. And here's it's, here's it's personified. Okay? And, and, and about 16, we've talked about this. Okay? Holy day, not holiday. Holy days are the days that are in Scripture. Okay? And we're, we're going to leave that alone. Let no man beguile you through philosophy and vain deceit. <clears throat> Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels into intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly, carnal mind. And not holding the head, capital H. And the head of the body is who? Christ. Okay? From which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment, ministered, and knit together, increaseth with the increase of God. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Man-made imposed ordinances. Hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Touch not. Taste not. Handle not. Uh, you know, you, you're not supposed to eat pork. Mm, all thing, you know. What do you mean? They're all sanctified by the word of God and by prayer. For those who know the truth. Uh, it says in First Timothy chapter 4, uh, I, I can eat pork. I can eat shellfish. Praise the Lord. Okay? You don't want to? Yeah, that's fine. But don't you come around telling me that I can't in orders of salvifically because that... That's not how it is today. We can eat pork. We can eat uh, shellfish and stuff like that. You don't want to? Knock yourself out. Don't come to me and say to me that it's a matter of salvation, that I'm eating uh, bacon or back bacon, eh? Okay? Shut up. Anyway, which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men. Which things indeed have indeed a shoe of wisdom. What wisdom? earthly, sensual, devilish, in will worship and humility, worshiping your own will. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. It looks good. Hey, look, 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 look these Catholics. How many times have you run into people when you're talking about Catholics, brother? It's like, well, yeah, I mean, look at these guys. They, they, they observe Lent. They do all this. They, you know, yeah. What is, what is that? Which things have indeed a shoe of wisdom and will worship and humility and not Will Smith, brother. Stop it. <laughs> anyway. In will worship. Their own will. Like alcoholics who go to that satanic alcoholics anonymous. Their will worship. Okay. Well, their higher power is a doorknob or something. See, again, this is the necessity about, you know, these guys who talk about the changed life. What is the catalyst to the changed life? Your will worship? Or because you're a new creature, because you were broken of your self-righteousness? Okay? And neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. I can't do that because I, I, it's Lent. I can't do that because I'm fasting for Lent. Oh, I can't do that because I'm fasting because of it. Fairly, you have your reward. Wow, look at that dude, man. He, he turned down a good, medium, rare uh, filet mignon with a double baked potato and glazed. Uh, uh, it, never mind. So, wow, look at him, and he's fasting for Lent. Verily, verily, I say unto you, you have your reward. First Corinthians five, one and two. And see, when you're when you are your own God, when you are your own standard, when you worship your own will, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, you will do whatever you want, because you will not have God telling you what to do. Right? What happens? Christian religiosity the repugnance thereof will be in the description box what happens 
It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. Ew! Ew! What is that? Ew, brother! I saw that video. That was an uh, uh, Ishmaelite who did that. <laughs> that came from It's like, ew! Ew, brother! What is ew? And his father's wife, it was his mother-in-law, not his mother, or also was that so? That's what I believe. And that's, you know, the sexual mores that are forbidden in Leviticus cross dispensational lines. You heretics, love is not love. What you call love is... Uh. Anyway. Verse 2. And ye are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from you. We're not judging you. Only God can judge you. We're not supposed to judge anything before the time. So come on in. This is when you need to be amongst uh, the, the church, the people, not the building. That's when, you, when you're fornicating with your father's wife, your stepmother. <coughs> Ew. Uh, that's when you need us. That's when you need... And puffed up. We're not... Look at... We're Christians and we're not judging you. We can't judge you. Only God can judge you. Dude! You you devils... Never mind you guys. But you, you, you self-theists, because there's no such thing as an atheist. Hey, Dave! You are your own God. Okay, get over yourself, you twit. Anyway, um, the arrogance is that we are our own standard. We, we ain't judging you. Puffed up. So you're better than God because you're not judging as God would have you judge. But that's when you like bring them in so you can infect everybody else. Luke 18, Luke 18, Luke 18, verses 9 on to verse 14. I, hey, I'm better, I'm better than God. It's like that one idiot, you know, loves Satan. <laughs> you know, God, I, 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 for, I forget which one, the video where he addressed that ridiculous idiot. <laughs> Love Satan, you know, forgive Satan, idiot. Anyway, Luke 18, verses 9 on to verse 14. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. Hey, if we were alive in our father's stead, we wouldn't have done that. Yeah. We're not judging you. Only God can judge. We're supposed to judge nothing for the time. So come on in with your perversion amongst us and let your poison infect everybody. That's Christianity, guys. That is Christianity. That's what they do. Christianity is of Satan. Oh. It is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Okay? Take offense, take a gate. When are you going to get your head? You need to wake up. Okay? I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I Possess. Now, look at verse 11 and verse 10, uh, 12. I, 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 <laughs> I, 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 me, we shall be as gods, only good and evil. I will be like the most high, huh? Even though there is only, uh, even though there is uh, only, what is that? Um, I thank thee. God, that I, I thank thee, 
that I am not as other men are? I'm better. I'm better than so and so because I saved myself by my own belief. I'm better because I had the cookie, okay? I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. It's right there, dude. It's right there. And the publican. And the publican. Standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven. But smote upon his breast, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. It's a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. But we're all sinners. But I'm not as bad as that guy. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Uh, Isaiah 65, Isaiah 65, Verses 1 on to verse 5. Isaiah 65. Verses 1 on to verse 5. I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, Behold me. Behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people which walketh in a way that was not good their own thoughts Christianity and every denomination they're in including King James Bible believing Christianity just a mere another denomination bravo there pal okay after their own thoughts they are their own God a people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face that sacrificeth in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of brick which remain among the graves, dead in trespasses and sins, and lodge in the monuments, which eat swine's flesh, different dispensation, and broth of abominable things is in their vessels, which say, Stand by thyself, come not near to me, for I am higher than thou. I save myself by my own belief. I go to Christ's church that he found. I'm elect because of my skin color. These are smoke in my nose, a fire that burneth all the day. Of course, if I were in Adam's place, well, we, we, we have a little bit more of an advantage in that. Would you have? Would I? I don't know. You know why? Because I don't trust my own heart. And you know what, dude? I mean, how many of you? Come on now, be. Let's be honest with ourselves here for once in your life, pal. How many of you have made great bold? protestations. I'd never do that. I'd, I'd never. And then Satan, you know, you, you're serving down. Go ahead. and Go ahead. Don't, don't hurt him. And then the very thing that you... Look at Peter. Granted, he wasn't saved at that time because the Holy Ghost wasn't given. But look at Peter. I'll never deny thee. And what does he do? He denies him atrociously. Okay, three times. You know. Peter, now son of Jonas, lovest thou me? <laughs> did that three times, you know, because three times he denied him. How many of you, come on, be honest with yourself, man. Sister, brother. I'd never do that. I'd never do that. Next thing you know, you do the very thing that you swore up and down that you never would. And then in, in, you're down on your knees. It's like, Lord! Lord! I did the very thing. Oh, how many? And you know what? You holier-than-thou, self-righteous pigs. 
out there. It's like, well, I've never done that. You lie and your breath stink. I can smell it over here. You, you go off someplace. You take a long walk off short pier. Okay. You're probably a King James Bible believing Christian, aren't you? There are, I'm sure, those of you out there. Well, I'm, you know, I have never done it. Yeah, yeah. You say I'd never do that. I'm in that situation. I'd never do that. Then, suddenly, as if on cue, a similar situation happened. You and I ain't going to go through something like what Adam did. Some of us will go through similar situations where the rug gets taken out from under you as Job. Hopefully not as severe, but, you know, lose everything. What would you do? I'd never do... Really? How do you know until you're there? You can trust in the Lord, but aren't you giving a little bit more uh, confidence of yourself? How, what would I do in Adam's stead? I'd like to tell you I would do, hey, Eve. <clears throat> but you know what? I don't know. What would happen to me? What would I do if, like Job, I lose my wife, I lose this place, I lose it. I've already kind of lost my health, so <laughs> this is what it is. But it's like, okay, what would I do? With my health, it's like, Lord, this is my fault. I've done this to myself. Okay, well, who am I to blame? Oh, it's these guys. It's, it's like you blaming the cigarettes for your cough. This <laughs> is so stupid. It's like you're blaming the booze for your liver problems. You're blaming the booze for your attitude. Truth is, I don't know. I'd like to say that I would be like Job. I would like to say that. Yeah, of course I would. So would you. But the truth is, until the rubber hits the road, how are we going to react? I said to to dear sweetheart brother, would you? Would I? We can, we can guesstimate until we're chartreuse in the face. One, two, three, four. Four things all at once right at you. How would you react? Now, we, we, we have the scriptures. It's like this. Okay, this is how we ought to. But again, God's not holding a gun at your head to make the right decision. Romans 7. Romans 7 is so beautiful for this. You know? For that, verse 15, For that which I do I allow not, sin. For what I would, that do I not, sin not. Always, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, make the right choices. Paul, Acts 21, he acted in his pride. Peter, we all know about Peter. Okay? But what I hate, that do I. <laughs> if, I if then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Because the law tells you that you are incapable of doing it by yourself. You need God. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. He's not disassociating, but what he is saying, like, look, sin. And where is sin? You read Romans 8. It's here in the flesh. <laughs> Verse 18. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good you want to do the right thing, but guess what? Guess what? We don't always do that, do we? Unless you're, you know, you're a perfect black Poolian or Canadian or a guy from Maine or something like that, right? Don't get me started on that stuff. 
For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Sin, not sin. Again, eh, you run into any of these sinless perfection idiots. <laughs> Bring them to Paul. Well, Paul was a false prophet. Oh, you, you're crazy. Bye-bye. Okay? Paul missed that. Anyway. I find in the law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Because our spirit and soul are housed here. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. You know, that hidden man of the heart, that ought, which is ought to be the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. You know, the Holy Ghost, the way is that spirit. One God, the rise of spirits on the body. Okay? Why do you say it backwards, by the way? I wonder. Anyway, but I see another law in my members, flesh, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members, Law of sin which is in the flesh. Read Romans chapter 8. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Well, Paul, see, Paul is like, if it's sin, you know, more so, no, you need to read Romans 6. Jeremiah 7. Jeremiah 7. Wow, that's a big leap. This Cambridge mine is well is broken in. <laughs> Jeremiah of chapter 7, verses 8 on verse 16. Behold, ye trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will ye steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely and burn incense unto Baal? And walk after other gods whom ye know not. Other gods, lowercase g. You don't even know your own heart. And ye shall be as gods. Oh, I wouldn't do that. I would, I'd never deny you circumstances, situation, and what you do. You blow it. Oh, wretched man that I am. But you're, you're a perfect Christian, ain't you? I'm not sin. I don't sin. You, you. Go on someplace. In there a hot bed waiting for you, pal? Yeah. And come, now look at this. And come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, we are delivered to do all these abominations. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at verse 9. Steal. Murder. Commit adultery and swear falsely. Easy believism. The thief cometh not but to kill, to steal, and destroy. Climb up some other way. Hey, and verse 10 here. We are delivered to do all these abominations. Hey, I saved myself by my own belief. I, I, you know, the more I sin, the more grace abounds. Hey, we're not even under the morality of the law. So, hey, do it. Don't worry about it. Catholics. Well, I'll, I've sinned, but hey, I can go to my Jesuit priest, do a hundred Hail Marys, eat the cookie, and you're good. All things are lawful for you, right, pal? As you're decking the halls. Yeah, all things are lawful for you. Not all things are expedient. The excuses again. Excuses got to stop. Lost people make excuses. Yes, saints make excuses too. Yes, we do. But there comes time when that ends. When And when you living in your... Hey, hey there, man. When you're living in your excuses, huh? And trying to deceive a dear saint. I'm losing respect for you. Anyway. Is this house which is called by my name become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, said the Lord. Why? Because they boast. Were they ashamed when they committed the abomination? Nay, they can't even blush. They declare their sin is Sodom. They don't even hide it. Brazen. Like the free gracers. Hey, just do it. Don't worry about it. But 
But go ye now unto my place which was at Shiloh, where I set my name at first, and see what I did to it for the wickedness of my people Israel. And now because ye have done all these works, saith the Lord, and I spake unto you, rising up early and speaking, but ye heard not. And I called you, but ye answered not. Therefore, what are we reading to here? Verse 16. Therefore will I do this unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein ye trust, and unto the place which I gave to you and to your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. They trust in, trusted in the physical structure, not the one who filled that structure. And I will cast you out of my sight as I, have, as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Why did he say that? Because they made their choice and gone past the point of no return. Today, it's not, an, not a thing that God can't save them. God can save anybody. You'd be like Stephen Anderson and uh, uh, Calvinists to say, well, there are people God can't save. Uh, uh, that's heresy. That's heresy. Or God won't save. Uh, that's heresy. God can and will save anyone. Not at gunpoint, though. But see, he can and will. He can and will. But see, you've you got to be broken of your self-righteousness, see. And there are people who, in their self-righteousness, will go so far, not that God cannot, will not save them, but they go so far that they can't come back because they are their own standard. Hence, they go beyond salvation by their own choice. Not that God can't save them or won't save them. No, they've made a choice. They are their own God and they go past the point of no return. Woe unto you, and I know of several of these people who are at that point, unfortunately. First Corinthians 12. First Corinthians 12. So, it would sound really good. Uh, oh, oh, it would. And uh, you've got King James Bible in Christian. I'd never do that. I'd never be like, yeah, right, pal. You don't even know your own heart. Huh? Count them pennies and cars, pal. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, verses 1 on to verse 10. Um, no, 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 no. For a Second Corinthians twelve, excuse me, wrong place. Second Corinthians twelve. Hmm. It is not Second Corinthians twelve one under ten. Paul, Paul had a pride problem. Acts chapter twenty one. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to go glory. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are expedient. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven, where God is. You've got the sky that you see, you've got the other heaven, the space, and you've got the third where God is, okay? I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Uh, that he was caught up into paradise. You do the work on the word paradise. Did that somewhere uh, in a video. I can't find it because that was before hashtags I was doing. Okay. Paradise. You do the work. You search the scriptures. The word search on paradise. Paradise is equated with where the Lord is. Where is the Lord? He's in heaven, but he's also in you. God is bigger than you can realize, okay? The, the wrong God, you Trinitarians, you know, put God into a box. I know you cringe when you, I say that, brother, but that's what Trinitarians do, okay? The wrong God, okay? That will be in the description box for you, okay? How he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. And, and you got these 
Pentecostal idiots who claim they went to heaven and saw God. No, they didn't. Or they went to hell and saw all that stuff. No, they didn't. They're going there, but no, they didn't. You got these charismatic, or excuse me, Pentecostal charismatics. Well, I've seen it. Seen what? I've seen the Lord. Uh, no, you haven't. You've seen something. I ain't going to deny that. But you have not seen the Lord. Paul was caught up to paradise. <coughs> <coughs> the third heaven where God is. And he says it's not lawful to utter the things he heard. Didn't say anything about what he saw. <laughs> you, you, you get it over yourself. Okay? Never trust any of these people who have had these gone to heaven, gone to hell, and come back and write a book about it and go on with Sid Roth. It's supernatural. Watch out for them devils. Hey there, there kid. You've seen God, huh? No, you haven't. You lie. You're deceived. And such a shame. You're a nice guy, too. Of such a one will I glory, yet of myself will I not glory, but of my infirmities. And when these guys, they claim they go to heaven or hell and then they come back, it's all about, well, I, I, I. See, they're vaulting themselves through their God, Satan. Not vaulting God through themselves. There's a big difference. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. Fool says in his heart, there is no God. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear. Lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, and am I strong? My heart problems is my own fault. But when I have a bad night, I take that as a uh, check against me. It's like, hey, you know what, Brad? You did this to yourself. But, uh, you know, if, when the Lord gets me through a bad night, then it's like, makes me appreciate a little bit more. Especially for the things that the Lord will have me to do. I'd, I'd love to tell you, without fail, if I, and you know, this is kind of moot, but if I were in the Garden of Eden, would I have smacked the fruit out of her hand and be like, what are you doing? Would I be able to, in losing everything, the Lord gave, the Lord taketh away, blessed be the, the name of the Lord. I'd like to tell you I would do as Job. But until I'm faced with that situation, Lord, has, I have been saved for 16 years. Would I? Would I? I know what I'm ought, to, what I'm supposed to do, but would I? Luke 7. Luke 7. Verses 36 on to verse 50. Oh, well, you can't handle this, huh? Too much scripture? I think channels out there that all they give is philosophy. Okay? Luke 7. 36 under the clue. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping. 
and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now, Wendy, I'm not like other people. I'm not like a sinner. No, Condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. I'm better than they are. You think so, don't you, sweetheart? Huh? Now, when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake with himself, saying, If this man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner, when he is. And Jesus answering said unto him, Shimon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And I can just see this self-righteous Pharisee. And he said, Oh, <clears throat> Master, say on. <laughs> Lord, uh, Shimon, come here. I have somewhat to say unto thee, Pharisee. <clears throat> Say on, master. Good master. Doesn't say good master, but. There was a creditor which had two debtors. The one owed him 500 pence, the other 50. When they had nothing to pay, he frankly. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm thinking, I just thought of a devil. He frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Shimon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave the most. That's obvious, isn't it? And he said unto him, Thou hast judged right, rightly. And he turned to the woman and said unto, the, unto Shimon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet. She hath washed my feet with her tears, and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in hath not ceased to kiss my feet. He who exalteth himself shall be abased, but he who humbleth himself shall be exalted. See, this is why one of the things too that with these stupid, easy believers, free gracers, okay, um, they love little because they they haven't been forgiven. They haven't been forgiven. They are their own God, so they love little. Anyway, let's let's let let's let the Lord speak through His Word. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. And the woman who feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Sisters, wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And the free gracer is not forgiven. Because they just believe and receive. They overpass brokenness, contrition, fear of the Lord. Calling on the name of the Lord is a work to them. They love little. But see, they love their sin. They love themselves. They are their own God. They love little. Um, Ezekiel 33. Ezekiel 33, just one verse. Verse 31. Verse 31. Ezekiel 33, verse 31. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they shew much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. And the Lord abhorreth the covetous. And he said unto her, back in uh, Luke 7, verse 48, Thy sins are forgiven. 
And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said unto the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. Now, now you idiot uh, free gracers who make it this far. See, see, by grace through faith. What was the faith then? The death, burial, and resurrection? No, it wasn't. They didn't know about the death, burial, and resurrection until it happened. What was their faith then before the death, burial, and resurrection? That God the Father, Jesus Christ, is come in the flesh. The Mashiach is right there, and he's the king. That's what their faith was in before the death, burial, and resurrection. They didn't know about the death, burial, and resurrection until it happened. So, thy faith has saved thee in what? She came to the king and asked the king for forgiveness as king. It wasn't in the death, burial, and resurrection. Watch out for that. Before the death, burial, and resur resurrection, they didn't know about it. Or else Peter wouldn't have said what he said. Or else you have a clear contradiction with Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 on verse 6. Okay? Look now at Luke 7, 31 out of 35. Yeah, and they do the shoe. They put on the facade. They look the part. They're on the outside. They look beautiful. But on the inside, they're full of dead men's bones. They look all, all righteous with their nice little button-up shirts and their beautiful manicured hairs and salt and pepper temple. Beautiful. They, they look so good. But on the inside, that like, like that one video, that gem that the Lord gave you, brother. Uh, what's on the inside? And the Lord said, We're on to... Then shall I liken the men of this generation, this particular generation he was ad addressing, instruction and righteousness for us today. And what are they like? They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace, calling one to another and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned to you, and ye have not wept. Like it says in Jeremiah 23, I have not sent they, these prophets, but they ran, wanting to be up front. Look at me, look at me. I'm doing like, you know, oh, oh, oh look at how sanctimonious and prayerfully I'm doing this. Oh, with the tone of voice and inflection. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. I, 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 I. For John the Baptist came, neither eating bread nor drinking wine. And ye say, he hath the devil. Son of man has come eating and drinking. And ye say, Behold, a gluttonous man and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans of sinners. But wisdom, fear of the Lord, is justified of her children. And there are two wisdoms. One that is first, peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Then there is another wisdom that is earthly, dirt, Sensual, led by your feeling senses, devilish. They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace, and call one to another, and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned to you, and ye have not wept. And that which is highly esteemed among, among men is an abomination in the sight of God. How can ye believe? Those of you who seek honor one from another and seeketh not the honor that cometh from God only. How can ye believe? How can ye believe? Look at us. We've piped unto you. We've mourned unto you. And you, ye, and you, haven't, you haven't paid any attention to us. Matthew 7, 21 unto 23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. New, relational. John 4, 
John chapter 4. Here you go. John chapter 4, verses 21 to 24. Jesus saith unto her, the woman, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, when ye shall neither in this mountain, nor, at, nor yet at Jerusalem, worship the Father. Because the Father doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. Ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You know, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord is that spirit. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. The Hebraic Jews. But the hour cometh and now is. When the true worshippers shall worship the Father. Capital S. In, capital F. In lowercase s. Spirit. And in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a. Spirit. Capital S. They which that worship him must worship him in spirit. Don't think so highly of yourself. And hey, I have a pride problem. I could say this to you. Stop thinking so highly of yourself that you boast. It's like, well, if I were in that situation, I'd do differently. Well, what happens when you are put into a certain similar situation and you do contrary to what you boasted about? Like Peter. Again, we already read it. Yeah, I gotta get my glasses on because I can't see it. Again, what's the what's the what do we do? What do we do? Romans seven. Romans seven. Twenty four on the verse twenty five. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Keep your eyes upon Jesus. Let your, uh, let your eye be single. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Move your foot from me. Thank you, brother. For Thank you for the question. Thank you. I expect no less from you. I'm going to get this uploaded. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, I love you. Please keep us in your prayers. We'll see you in the next video.